Siri, who am I? Let, you can't. You ask me who you are. Who am I? Who am I? What is an ibis? What am I? What is my purpose? Why is there porn on my system? This is your brain on digital technology. A flick of the thumb sparks a pale glow. You wait for the dopamine rush of an incoming message. Like a pathological gambler, you check again and again. You feed your narcissistic impulses with tweets. Lacking face-to-face -face views, you knock a friend down a peg on Facebook. Keeping loneliness at bay, you like a few others. Hours of catapulted birds later, you finger the off button. Repeat the cycle. You hardly notice as the synapses of your true self fry away. In mind change, neuroscientist, entrepreneur and British politician Susan Greenfield argues that our technologies are not only addictive, they are an existential threat. The brain, she writes, has an evolutionary mandate to adapt to its environment, and the digital world is changing at too rapid a pace for individuals or government regulations to keep up. Lives are destroyed. The extreme is the Korean couple whose compulsive video gaming led to the starvation of their newborn. But the warnings are no less ominous among billions of moderate users, a dramatic loss of empathy over the past decade and a precipitous decline in outdoor activity among children. Since media theorist Marshall McLuhan's pioneering work in the 1960s, a bevy of experts has explained what the electronic age is doing to us. Many, such as computer visionary Douglas Engelbert, assert that digital tools augment human intellect and foster interconnected democracy. Others, such as psychologist Sherry Turkle, whose 1984 masterpiece, The Second Self, studied the first generation of children raised on computers, have shifted from cautious optimism to disenchanted critique.